Support for the Snowplow Show comes from MailChimp. From MailChimp. Mail. Came. Chimp. More than 7 million businesses around the world use a MailChimp to send emails, newsletters, and deliver high fives. MailChimp. Send better email. Very nice. I use MailChimp. You do. I love it. Previously on the Snowplow Show. No, I did not order no roof. Mildred's in complete agreement with me. No, I'm not in no agreement with you. I have a recording of you being in agreement with me. No, you don't. You blowing smoke up my ass, buddy, or what's going on here? You think a tracer can stop me? (laughs) How about if I come down and punch your head off? Roy the retarded boy? You are receiving a call from an inmate at the Chili Pepper Correctional Facility in Roy, New Mexico. To accept this call, press 1. To block your number from receiving future calls, press 2. From the Phone Losers of America in Roy, New Mexico, this is The Snowplow Show. One story told week by week. I'm Brad Carter. You know, after putting this intro together, I really, I really want to just start looking up people from the serial podcast and start pranking them all you know make hilarious phone calls to jay and the investigators and the prosecutors but no fuck that i want to get this show out today not a week from now after i do a bunch of research it's okay though because i have lots planned today i'm going to do some more cardings but first i'm going to get rid of those old photo numbers i'm going to call all of them and just see if they pick up and maybe i'll just do elkie's idea of a car accident over and over and over see what happens. Hopefully some people will pick up, because otherwise I'm just going to have to erase this part out of the show. Before we get started, though, I have a few announcements. Announcement number one is that the new PLA media pack, Torrent, is up. I finished it, finally. I I tagged all of the the files and everything so they look nice on your iPhones and stuff, and I reorganized the directories to make it harder on you guys, of course, because I don't want you just, you know, easily dropping in all the files that you're missing. No! Instead, I rearranged all the files, so you can't even do that. The torrent is, I don't know, it's like twice as big. Maybe not quite twice as much. I don't know. It's big. It's like 61 gigs this time. And it contains everything that the Phone Losers of America has ever done. And it's all free to download from a torrent. I released it this past weekend. A couple people, I don't know if they're just trolling me or not. They say they don't know how to use torrents. They're like, oh, what's a torrent? So for those of you who don't know what a torrent is, I'm not going to explain it. But all you need to do is download a program called uTorrent. One word, the letter U-T-O-R-R-E-N-T. And then you just go to my torrent page at phonelosers.org slash torrent. And that's where you can get everything that the Phone Losers has ever done, including uh, all of the shows, all of the snowplow shows, even the secret one I did earlier this year. Oh man, I forgot about secret shows. I need to do more secret shows so I can exclude some of you people that don't contribute. But anyway, go to phonelosers.org slash torrent and download the torrent. And also, after I finished putting that torrent together, I put together another torrent for my prank phone call collection, which the one I had before, it was it was a few years old, but it has prank calls from everyone, every prank call group person in existence. Well, you know, not quite. I'm, I'm missing quite a bit of stuff, but I've added a ton of stuff since last time, including all of the shows from Prank Call Nation. Hopefully the hosts of other Prank Call Nation shows don't mind, because I didn't ask anyone. But it's also a torrent. It's nearly as big as the Phone Losers of America stuff, and it's located on that same page at phonelosers.org slash torrent. So two brand new torrents for you to listen to. Billions and billions of prank calls, a lot of them not by me. So if you're sick of my shit, download this prank call torrent, and you know, you'll find someone new to listen to. Today's show is sponsored by Metal, or as Laugh Track Matt likes to call him, Metal. I don't know which of us is right, but I call him Metal, because that's how his name is spelled. Thank you, Metal, for being a supporter of the show. If any of you listeners would like to support the show, all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash phone losers or phonelosers.org slash cactus. And there's all kinds of different ways for you to sign up and contribute. And holy fucking shit, I am just completely blown away over the generosity of all you listeners this past year. It's crazy how supportive you've all been, so thank you very much for that. The only bad thing, the only downside to all of this, is that I feel really guilty for not doing enough in 2014. I made all these promises, and I didn't accomplish, you know, maybe half of them I accomplished. I don't know. I still haven't done the Telephone Falls video episode. I have started on it, I just haven't gotten around to it. I'm going to do that in the early part of 2015. That's my goal. I'm going to get that done. 
because for some reason you guys want to see my crappy animation. I should probably just use Patreon money to have someone else draw and animate it, but that's expensive, so I don't know. Another thing I haven't finished is the poster. That's another thing I've started on, and I work on every once in a while, but I just never seem to get anywhere with it. If anyone else has a good poster idea, you know, feel free to send me your ideas. Maybe I'll just do that instead of my stupid idea. But on the upside, we've accomplished a lot this year. We got got that Bone Cage song, the I Freak Alone thing, which was a big joint project between us all. You know, we made the video together and everything. That was a lot of fun. And I can't believe I haven't done more of that. We've had a lot of stickers made. We've had that amazing coin made, which by the way, I still have coins left. Please take them off my hands. Phonelosers.org slash store. I don't know. It's been a good year. I'm really looking forward to seeing where all this goes over the next year. I think things are going to get out of hand. One last thing to announce is my new genius marketing plan, which is broadcasting live shows on Twitch while playing stupid games. Actually, this was Andreas's idea. I mean, I sort of thought about it in the past, but Andreas sent me an email and really motivated me to start doing this. And of course, I can't broadcast my own live shows while playing stupid games because... I don't know, I'm just not that good at multitasking. I can't sit there and play a game while I'm making phone calls and playing voicemails and stuff. But what I've been doing lately is whenever I'm listening to other shows on Prank Call Nation is I'll just turn on the broadcasting software and play stupid games while I'm listening to shows. Because I'm usually doing that anyway. Usually I'm playing Grand Theft Auto in the living room on the television, but I can't broadcast that from my television because I don't know how and I don't really want to. But GTA is coming out soon for uh, Steam. So I'll probably be broadcasting GTA. And that's my stupid new plan to get more listeners, is to just broadcast shit on Twitch. I'm exposing a loophole in Twitch, which allows me to play a uh, prank call audio instead of, you know, game audio. And hopefully other hosts of Prank Call Nation will use the Twitch also and, you know, play their own games while other shows are being broadcast. Because I don't listen to every show that comes out every single week. If you want to go look at the archives, though, it's twitch.tv slash prankcallnation. And I'm sure this idea is going to get us, you know, right around 10,000 or 20,000 listeners during every live show. It can't possibly go wrong. It's a genius idea. Finally, before we get started, I have an email here from Kyler. Kyler commands me to put up a picture of a cool PLA water bottle that he made, which has the PLA logo all over it and the word cactus all over it. And he says, I have to mention this on a show because he spent 20 Australian American dollars to have it made. So that will be the picture on phonelosers.org for this show. Everyone, please go there immediately and admire Kyler's water bottle because it sure is a water bottle with PLA logos all over it. Thanks, Kyler, for spending your hard-earned Australian American dollars. What the hell is an Australian American dollar? I've still got some photo numbers left from last week that we were doing. I got a huge list of photo numbers, and a bunch of them didn't answer over the holidays. I guess they were just busy or something, but they didn't answer. So now I've got all these numbers, so I'm going to give some of them a call and see if they pick up. And if they don't, I'm just going to delete them. Hello. Hello, Don. Yes. Hey, it's it's Roy from the, the portrait studio. Yes. And um, I just needed to um, let you know of a problem we had with your photos. Okay. I, I, I was driving um, from from home to a friend's house the other day, and I had your photos in the car with me, and I was looking at them while I was driving, and I got in a car accident. And my insurance company is saying that would be your fault, so I need to get your insurance information. <laughs> Hello? 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 I'm calling for Don. Yeah, this is her husband. What's going on? Oh, I just need to get your insurance information, because I got... Wow. Uh, well, I got in a car accident, and and uh, while I was while I was looking at your photos, why was you looking at her photos in your vehicle? I, I was just you I know don't... I was just browsing, you know I was just kind of looking through them. Yeah, well, I don't see how that's our fault. So what do you what is this about? Uh, my insurance <laughs> are you co- that retarded? My insurance company says it's your fault because I was looking at your is photos that because you're looking at pictures. Yeah, because I was... No, you're a weirdo if you think that's how it works. You can't be driving, looking at pictures, and think it's our fault. Well, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Well, that's what the insurance company says, so I just need to get your insurance right, well, you policy call number. call them back and tell them we think it's, that's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. So why do you have her photos so while you're looking in your vehicle? I, do I need to call talk to somebody, apparently? Oh, I, I hope not, no, because I, I, I was driving from my house to a friend's house, and I just had the photos in my car. I was just well, looking at why them. Why am I in your car? I, I don't know. I just, I, I just looking at them, you know. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't think this is a. I don't believe you for one, and for two, if you got her pictures in your car and you're looking at them, that's your fault. So I guess I need to call. Your name's Roy, right? Yeah, my All name's right, Roy. Later. But but, <laughs> sir, <laughs> sir. Hello. Hello, Cindy. Hello. Hi, Cindy. Yes. Cindy, it's Roy from the Portrait Studio. You had some photos done here. Yes. And and um. I was uh, I was driving from um, from a friend's house to, to home the other night, and uh, I was looking at your photos while I was driving, and I got in an accident. So my insurance company is saying that I need your policy number for your insurance because it's your fault because I was looking at your photos. No. What? Well, that's weird. Second lady that's hung up on me. Hi, this is Cindy. I can't come to the phone right now. <sighs> All right. Let's go on to the next one. I'm going to keep at this until I pull off this insurance scam of mine. Hello? Hello, Anna? Yes? Hey, it's Roy from the Portrait Studio. You had some photos done here? Hi, Roy. But, hi. I just needed to uh, ask you a question about your photos. Sure. And Well, I, I was uh, driving in my car, and I was looking at your photos. I had, I had made copies for myself. And uh, I got in a car accident, and the ah. insurance company, they're telling me it's your fault because I was looking at your photos, so I need to get your insurance information. Mm, is this a joke? Oh, no. No, of course. I wouldn't joke about something like this. Is that, has, but it's not our fault. Okay. Yeah, I was just looking at your photos while I was driving, and I guess I got distracted, and I ran into some lady. But how is that? That was at our fault. Because I was looking at your photos. It's your photos that distracted yeah, me. That has nothing to do with us. Yeah, it does, because um, it's, it's your photos. I was looking at your photos. So you're the one that distracted me. And that's what my insurance company is telling me, so I'm, I'm sure it's true. Okay, well, you can call my husband and talk to him about that. How's that? Okay, what's his number? Can I give you his telephone number? Sure. Okay, it is 314. Mm-hmm. And, okay, and I'm sorry, what is your last name? Zerbel. All right, how do you spell that? That's Y-U-R-R-B-E-I-L. B-E-I-L. And what's your first name? Roy, R-O-Y. Okay, and what is the number to reach you at? Okay, I will call you back once I speak to him before I give you his number. Okay. Um, I'll give you a call back here. In like well, he'll minutes. tell you the same thing. I mean, you just don't understand because you're a woman and you don't understand these things. But I need your insurance information. <laughs> okay. So, uh, I'll call you back. You're, you're just you. dumb. You're just dumb because you're a woman. <laughs> All right. I almost got her husband's phone number. Hello, Charlene speaking. Hello, this is Roy from the Portrait Studio. Hi. And, hi. Uh, we're, I, I just had a question about your photos. Okay. And um, I, I was actually, uh, I had your photos in my car. I was driving over to a friend's house and uh, I got in a car accident because I was looking at your photos while I was driving. So my insurance company is saying that I need to get your policy number for your insurance because it's your fault. Why are you looking at my photos? Ooh, I'm sorry. Well, I, I work here, so it's okay. I, I was just driving, um, you know, over to a friend's house, and I was looking at your photos, and I ended up running into some lady's car. I'm sorry. I do not know what you're talking about. I just told you what I'm talking um, about. I, I was looking at your photos while I was driving, and I got distracted, and I ran into some lady. And so I need your insurance policy number, because it's your fault. Uh, let me have your name and number. It's your fault, because I was looking at your photos. Uh, I'm sorry, but I didn't ask you to look at my photos. And, well, it doesn't uh, matter if you ask me or not. The fact is that I was looking at your photos, and they distracted me, and I got in a wreck because of you. I see. And what is your name? Roy. Roy. Okay. And, um, okay. And ever since this accident <laughs> happened, my neck has really been hurting me, and I, I think I might have to file a lawsuit against you. Hello? Hey, my, my neck's been really hurting me since this car accident. I'm going to have to file a lawsuit against you. Uh, what's your last name, Roy? Seaver. Beaver. Yep. Okay. Now see what your problem is. I mean, you need to take responsibility for your photos and give me your insurance information. 
I'm sorry, I do not give you need to give you my insurance information. However, I will be happy to give your name and your number to my insurance company, um, and they can contact you. Okay. Well, are, are they going to be bitches about it, just like you? I am certain that they will work to understand what your grievance is. Okay. So you, they, they just need to take responsibility for your dumb actions. And what is your phone number? Six. Okay. Which insurance company mm-hmm. are you with? Thank you very much, Roy. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Goodbye. Well, I probably won't because my neck's killing me. Hello? Hello, is Megan there? This is. Oh, hey, Megan. It's Roy from the portrait studio. You had some portraits done here? Uh Uh-huh. And uh, I I was driving in my car and I had your portraits uh, and I was just kind of looking at them while I was driving. And uh, I got into a car accident because I was distracted. And um, I I just need to get your insurance information because it's your fault. Who is this? My name is Roy from the Portrait Studio. And you're trying to blame me for your car accident? Well, yeah, because I was distracted by your photos. Ha, <laughs> you're funny. Goodbye. What? <laughs> Not trying to be funny. Megan Jenkins. You can't oh. take your call now. She's the angry sounding one. She didn't sound that angry when I talked to her. All right, I'll give up on her. Let's call Dana now. Hello? Hello, Dana? Yes. Hey, this is Roy from the Portrait Studio. You had some portraits done here? Oh, Whoa, that was weird. I think she hung up by accident. Hello? Hello, Dana, it's the Portrait Studio. Hey, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Oh, that's... Um, Go ahead. Oh, that's okay. Hey, um, I was driving around um, yesterday, and I I had your photos in the car with me, and I was just kind of looking at them, and I got distracted, and I got in a car accident. So the car accident is basically, it's your fault. So I need to get your insurance information. (laughs) That's pretty funny. What's funny about it? It's not funny. My neck hurts. You're funny. Why do you keep saying that? (laughs) Because it's not my fault. It is too your fault. I was looking at your photos. It's your photos that distracted me. So it's your fault. You shouldn't have my photos. I was taking him to a friend's house. <laughs> yeah, they shouldn't be in your car. Why? What, what's wrong with that? It's as if my photos shouldn't be in your car. Well, they're not your photos. I made copies for myself. So I was just, I was driving him from my house to a friend's house. And when I got out on the highway, I ran into some lady's car. <laughs> You're funny. Is that what you had to call her out? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I'm calling you. I don't see why you keep laughing at me, though. It's not funny. I got in an accident. The other lady's in the hospital. That's not funny. That part's not funny. Yeah, I know. It's horrible. The entire situation's horrible. I just need your insurance information. Because I, I might file... No, I'm not I, giving that to you. I might file a lawsuit against your insurance company. Okay. You can do that. I, but I can't unless I get your policy number. Well, you have to call them. Okay. Good idea. What's their number? <laughs> Come on, don't make me ban you from the store permanently. Don't make me hang your picture up by the front door and say, do not let this lady in. Tries to kill our customers. Hello, Dana? Are you looking for the number? Guess that's a no. Nobody's taking this seriously. This is, this is the worst idea ever, Elkie. Never using your ideas again. I'm sorry, but the person you called... And the last two went straight to voicemail. So I guess I'm done with these photo customers. I deleted them all when they didn't answer, so they're gone forever now. All right, let's get started on car dings. I have a lot of ding messages sitting in my voicemail. I didn't get to any of the ding stuff over the weekend, which kind of sucks. A few minutes ago, I had over 70 messages sitting here, but I went through and there were a lot that were just hang-ups and listeners trying to fool me. So now I'm down to 39. 39 numbers in here. There's one small problem with cardings, and I should have mentioned this when I told you guys to put notes on cars. But the problem is this. I think that I probably shouldn't be calling people within my own state, which is Oregon. And somebody in Oregon has been leaving a lot of notes. So I feel like kind of a jerk because I'm not going to call any of these Oregon people back. I think it's a bad idea to involve local police. It violates the rules of prank calling at phonelosers.org rules. 
But don't worry, I'm not going to just throw these out. I'm going to give them to Carlito, probably, or one of the other Prank Call Nation hosts if they want it. Uh, today's Tuesday. Jag TV goes on today, so maybe I'll give these to Jag TV if I can get a hold of him in time. And if he gets through to any of these people, I'll just uh, I'll, I'll steal the phone call audio from his show and play it on my show. But it just seems like a bad idea to, you know, really involve myself in prank calls to people that live less than an hour from me. Because people are so eager to just involve the police in things that aren't a police matter. So don't worry, Oregon person. Thank you very much for leaving the notes. But I'm, I'm, I'm not going to call them on this show. But I will pass them along to other people. So make sure you're listening to all the shows on PrankCallNation.com. Because I'm going to be handing these numbers out. All right, so what do I have? I'm going to go uh, from the most recent and go backwards. It looks like the most recent one is from, oh, big surprise, 818. Someone in 818 is really into this whole carding thing. Yes, uh, you left a message on my phone, I mean on my car, at when I was at church. <laughs> at church? On, Val- on Christmas Eve. And oh I'd like you to call me. Uh, my phone number is 818. Thank you. Bye. Wow. Okay. So someone... <laughs> that's hilarious. Someone was at church on Christmas Eve and decided to leave notes on people's cars. Or I don't know if they were at church, but they went to a church and left some notes somewhere in the San Fernando Valley. Hi. We cannot come to the phone right now. Oh, man. But please leave a message. And we'll- okay. I'll save that one for later. That's pretty awesome, though. Christmas Eve at a church. Next, we have the 413 area code. Hi, Roy. My name is Dan. Um, Several weeks back, I think it was, um, you left a note on my Buick saying, Sorry, I damaged your car. Please call me. Um, I just got the note. My my children usually drive the car, and uh, one of them put it inside the car underneath the uh, armrest. Damn kids. I just got it yesterday. Damn kids. So, uh... I'm not really sure what damage you did, but um, if you can give me a call back, I'd appreciate it. Again, my name is Dan. My phone number is up. Thanks. Bye-bye. We're not able to come to the phone right now. Please leave a message. We'll get back to you. Stop calling us. Leave us alone. (laughs) What the hell? Oh, my gosh. I'm guessing, uh, you know, that one's from four days ago. Maybe they Googled my phone number? <laughs> I'm not able to come to the phone right now. Please leave a message. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. One more try. <laughs> well, cardings are off to a great start. We're not able to come to the phone right now. Please leave a message. We'll get back to you as soon as we can. Hey, Dan. Honey, baby. It's Roy calling. I can't believe you guys just yelled at me when I called a minute ago. I'm very hurt. And just for that, I'm not going to give you my insurance policy number. Take that. What do you think of that, Dan? Take that. All right. Bye. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. Was that a kid that yelled at me? I, it, was, it was hard to tell. It happened so so quickly. <laughs> I wonder if maybe a kid put it on his dad's car, but then freaked out when he saw me calling. I don't know. All right. So the next one is from Georgia. Hello, uh, Roy. This is McDaniel. Uh, I uh, am the owner of the Black Camry that got dinged uh, on Christmas Day. So, uh, no big deal, but I do want to talk to you. So, uh, give me a call uh, whenever you uh, get a chance. Again, this is McDaniel with the Black Camry, 404. What are you guys doing out on Christmas Day, leaving notes? Don't you guys have toys to play with? New video games, something? Christmas Day and Christmas Eve... (laughs) I think none of my listeners have families, is what it is. Hello? Hello, McDaniel? Yeah, is this pro move? No, my name is Roy. I I left a note on your car. Oh, this is Roy. Yeah, I I left a note on your car. I'm sorry I didn't get back to you. You know, I took so long. Yeah, I noticed the uh, the little ding in there. Yeah, uh, on, on on the roof. How did that happen? Uh, I was standing on your roof. I was trying to get better uh, cell phone reception. <laughs> nice. Yeah. No, I'm serious. Awesome. I, I was just awesome. like, I, I couldn't. I was trying to call my mom, and the call wouldn't go through. 
because I have a shitty carrier. It's called Metro PCS. I got gotcha. you. I got yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just I was standing so, on the roof and it kind of caved in a little bit. What was your uh, What were you hoping to do? What you gonna do? I was just calling. Kind it. of. Uh, you want to give me your insurance information or, or I, what? I don't know. I, I'm thinking it's not really my fault because your roof was really weak. I don't even weigh that much. Oh, right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so are you calling this like sort of a, a, this is a joke? Are you like pranking? Oh, right no, now? it's not a joke. I wouldn't joke about something like this. I just felt bad. It was on Christmas and everything, but I, I only right, weigh right, like 78 right. pounds. Oh, you got to be light as hell. I mean, everything, my roof looks fine. Yeah, but it, it, Listen, it, Roy, uh, it dented in, but then maybe it popped back up after I left. I mean, it's nothing. Uh, there's nothing noticeable about it at all. So okay, there's no dent in my roof or anything. Okay, so, you know, I wouldn't worry about it. All right. Well, that's good. That's all right. Good to know. Uh, kudos, kudos for uh, you know. Yeah. Stepping up. Oh sure. Yeah. No problem. I, I hope. Right. I hope you have a but, good uh, Christmas. No you too. So same to you. And a happy New Year. Same to you. And a happy same Kwanzaa. Happy year. Don't all for, of that. Don't forget all Kwanzaa. That. Happy Hanukkah. Yeah, Hanukkah. Don't Definitely. Hanukkah either, my friend. Yep. <laughs> all right have a nice day all right peace out bye wow this the, these calls are going terrible first nobody answers and now now we're just getting people that that think it's hilarious don't mind at all it's gonna give up i'm gonna delete this show hi roy this is rachel and i received your lovely little card on my window <laughs> and they dinged my car um, as I'm clearly in the lines of the parking spot, I don't appreciate the you stuck at parking little note you left um, with your little thread at the bottom. So, you know, if you think you may call back, I would like to know where you think my car at. Um, 206. Thank you. Bye. She sounds like she could be fun. She probably won't answer, though. This was eight days ago. Hello. Hi, Rachel. It's Roy. I left a note on your car. Hi. Hi. Yes. Yeah. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Yeah, sorry I took so long to call you back. Oh, it's okay. Um, I couldn't find where you dinged my car at, though. I was on the roof. I was on the roof? Yeah, I was standing How? I was standing on top of your car. How were you standing on top of my car? I was trying to get a better cell phone signal. And, uh, You're lying. Why would you say I'm lying? Because it sounds like some kind of prank. How's it a prank? Why would I, what kind of prank would, would that be? Why would you stand on someone's car? What kind of human being does that? Well, what kind of human being leaves a note if he didn't really do anything? What kind of prank would that be? Well, why, what kind of human being would stand on someone's car and do that? I was, it, it was for a good reason. I was trying to get a good cell phone signal. That's a horrible reason. No, it's not. It worked. I, I was able to connect. I was trying to get line of sight to the tower. Well, that's good, but... You just go around seeing on everyone's roof of their car to get cell phone service? Just it's like a usual thing of yours to do? Well, no. Usually my cell phone works just fine. I, I'm on a really good carrier. It's called Metro PCS. But it just, I don't know, for some reason it wasn't working that day. So I stood in your car to get a better signal. That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Oh, wow. That's pretty sad. You haven't heard very many ridiculous things then, right? No, because most parents and mothers... Would raise their children and not do stupid shit like that. I'm not a child. Why are yeah, you? Yeah, I, I clearly can understand that. Then why are you calling me a child? Why are you talking about my mother? Oh my gosh. Okay, so what kind of damage did you do, or you think you did? Oh, well, I caved in the roof, but maybe it popped back out if you didn't see anything wrong. Okay, well, what's your insurance? What do you mean, what's my insurance? Well, you're saying you dinged my car, so I'm going to have to go get it fixed if it's really, you know, messed up. I don't have insurance. I don't even own a car. Then I guess I'll just have to call the cops, and then you can get in trouble for not having insurance. No, I won't. Wh- why would I get in trouble yeah, for not? Why would I get in trouble for not you having insurance? Not have insurance. Do you have a driver's license and a car? No, I don't have a car. I just told you that I don't so have a car. So you're walking around the mall parking lot, standing on people's cars. Yeah, I was. I was uh, looking through cars, trying to get loose change out of them. You're freaking ridiculous. No, you are. Whatever. I'm just going to report you to the police because I don't have time to listen to your bullshit. Then why are we talking? Why don't you just hang up? <laughs> okay, I, I, I quit on the whole standing on a car thing. I've actually made two other calls, and I've talked to people uh, doing the same standing on your car thing, and I, I deleted them from the recording, because they just were not funny at all, and that one was barely funny. From her message, I thought she was going to be hilarious, but nope. 
Hi. Uh, you left a note on my car that you dinged my car, and uh, I want to talk to you, and it's urgent. So call me at the number from your caller ID. Bye. Well, that was eight days ago, and she hasn't called back since. So apparently it's not that urgent. Good afternoon, this is Camille. Hello, Camille. This is Roy. I left a note on your car about a week ago. Oh, yes, yes, you did. Yeah, sorry about that. I've been in jail for the past week. I wondered who was calling from. Oh, yeah. Washington. Yep, it's me. It's Roy. So I surveyed the car high and low. Are you talking about the ding in the, what is it? I don't even know which side of the car it's on. It's on the passenger side. Oh, no. On one of the doors. It's more like in the middle. It's on the roof. Did you look on the roof? No. Oh, so you didn't survey it high and low. You just surveyed the sides, I guess. Apparently, my elevation for high and low is uh, not above the roof line. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I, I, I was on top of the car. I was standing on it. Oh, good deal. And, you know, it just sort of, it caved in a bit. Okay. And why were you standing on it again? Uh, I was trying to get a better um, a signal on my cell phone. I couldn't seem to get a signal out there in the parking lot. So you stood on my car? Yeah. Tell me. Tell me, do. What kind of horse's ass does that to someone else's oh, car? Oh, wh- why are you calling me names? I- I'm just, I'm trying to be a- do the right thing here. Okay. How are you going to square this up with me? Well, I don't know. No? Is there damage? Because, I mean, I, I was thinking maybe by now the dent had popped back out, so maybe it's fine. Uh, no, not fine. Not fine by a damn sight. And, you a know, really, sight. what kind of clown climbs on someone else's car? Well, uh, the kind that needs to get a cell phone signal. I don't know what was up with the cell phones that day, but Walk I could Walk outside of the damn parking structure if that's your problem. Uh, you don't climb on somebody else's car. No, that's what I did, and you it have worked. that little... Do you have that little respect for every human being? Well, it worked because you I got up there. Because and, you didn't know me. Yeah, I, it worked, though, okay. is what I'm saying. It worked. I, I was able to make my phone call. I don't care if it worked or not. You have no business climbing on anybody's car. And if you were actually standing on top of my car, you're an ass. Well, that's not nice. Also, while I was up there, well, there was someone you know what? in the parking Neither lot. You standing on someone else's car, you rude ass. There was someone in the parking lot, though. They started playing a banjo, and so I started, like, stomping one of my feet. And I was wearing golf cleats, yeah, and I was no, cl- clapping look, my hands. I don't, have time for, I don't have time for the bullshit. So no, I'm, I'm completely are serious. Gonna, are you going to just tell me what's going on here, or what? I think he was a street performer, but I started clapping my hands and stomping my foot with my golf cleats. And that's, that's what happened, so you basically. you really are an ass. Well, no, it's not my fault. He's a street performer. Yeah. Right. You know? So how are you going to square up dinging my car? That's well, what I want to know. Well, is there even any damage now? Because maybe you have like that self-healing paint. Maybe that's like you didn't even check the roof. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. What? You don't have that kind of, it looked like a newer car. Doesn't it have that feature? I, you know, I don't have time to waste with some dumbass. Then why are you talking to game. me? Why are you acting like this? I'm acting like what? I'm just telling you what happened. I'm just trying to do the right thing. Yeah, right. What do you mean, yeah, right? Did you not want me to leave a note? I've had that happen to me before. Someone dinged my car and they didn't even leave a note. I want you to lose my phone number. I want you to go to Seattle and I want you to take a really long westward walk and just keep going. Why do I have to go to Seattle first? Can't I just go west from, from here? No, go to Seattle first. I don't want to go to Seattle. I don't like Seattle. You know what? I don't like you. Oh, okay. (laughs) Whoa. I think I'm scared now. All right, so if you haven't figured it out yet, I'm, I'm breaking my own rules. I'm calling locally. The person that left all the notes in Oregon, he called and left me a message. That was kind of funny. I should have played it on the air, but um, he said he left about 50 notes. At, uh, at this mall up in up in Portland, a mere hour from me. Let me call her right back. <laughs> it's always good to call more than once when it's a local number. Hi, this is Canel. I'm unable to take your call right now. So now she's not picking up. I was going to ask her if I could go to San Francisco first and then go west. Why does it have to be Seattle? Hi, 
am calling about uh, what? yeah you I mean something about my car you leave me a note oh. uh, I don't know yeah can you uh, uh, call me back okay thank you bye bye okay it sounds like an Asian version of Stacy your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message and no answer from Asian Stacy. Damn it, damn it, damn it. I think I'm just done with carding calls for this show. So that might be the end of this show. I don't know. Uh, that's probably for the best, though. None of these other organ places are answering. And that's probably a good thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn these over to some other PCN hosts. But organ person, I do appreciate you leaving notes on all these cars for me. I guess I should have mentioned that before, though. If you live in Oregon, please don't leave notes on cars. Because I'll just end up getting in trouble somehow. I'll end up having the state police come to my door or something. Again. Remember at the beginning of this show when I'm like, I have a lot planned for this show. It's going to be a good show today. But no, nobody's been answering carding calls. So now the show is going to be short. And I'm going to end up just like filling up space by playing a bunch of voicemails. Hey Brad, it's Frank. Hey Frank. Um, I listen to your show sometimes. You're you're all right. You're pretty funny. Oh, thanks, I guess. Frank. Um, I was mostly calling because I was wondering if you could get me uh, Jad's uh, autograph. If you could do that, I would appreciate it a lot. Uh, he doesn't have a number to call, so I'm just going to call. Oh, weird. Frank lives in the same area code as Jad. You because he seems unattainable, and and you're very you give yourself easy access to your fans. So. Uh, since I'm kind of a fan, could you do me a favor and get me his autograph? I'll I'll take it on uh, on anything that you want to write on a cake. Um, I would take it on on a old check. Maybe you could get a check, uh, you know, that you wouldn't cash because of because it was a scam or something like that, or one of those coins. Send him a coin, have him sign it. And then give him the money to send it back to you, and then you send it to me. That's perfect right there. All right, I'll be I'll be watching my mailbox. Thanks. Okay, great. Thanks for calling, Frank. Not Giad, but Frank. Roy, this is Jacob calling, uh, also known as the 50 Cent Guy or the... I don't even remember. I don't remember what else I was considered, but the 50 Cent guy is this guy. Yeah, well, thanks for taking 10 seconds of this voicemail just to explain your various aliases to me. I received my welcome package in the mail uh, the other day uh, for becoming a member of the PLA Patreon group. Yay. Oh, after the, yeah, after the PayPal issue. That was the PayPal guy that, you know, had issues with donating my 50 cents. Anyway, um, I had a little bit of an issue with this package. So when I opened it up, I was expecting this wonderful PLA coin that you keep talking about on your show over and over again. Um, and it's non-existent. There is no PLA coin. Um, I'm sure that it was just a simple packing mistake on your end, and I'm sure that you will have one federal express overnight to me as soon as you get this voicemail. So of course. I'll be expecting that from you. Thank you, Ryan. It's already Bye-bye. been sent. It's on the way. So the PLA coin thing, I mean, yes, I do have some left. And yes, I have been sending them out still to new uh, Patreon subscribers, most of them. Not not the dollar a month subscribers, because I don't want to lose money, and I don't know what level you subscribed at. But most of the people, I've been trying to send coins still, even though I said I was only going to send them that one month. Basically, that deal is over, and there's just a limited number of coins left, and then they'll be gone forever. I will never make 2014 coins again because there's only a day or two left of 2014. Why would I do that? So I don't know if you're kidding around with me or not, but if you seriously think that you should have received a coin and you didn't, send me an email and let me know about that. Or or send me a message on Patreon. There's a thing where you can message me on Patreon. And yeah, we'll figure things out. I'll tell you, too bad, whatever, you don't get one. Or I'll send you one. Uh, Well, you know, we'll just, we'll see what's going on. Hey, Brad, it's Dr. Astronaut. Thanks for using my prank ideas and stuff the other day. It was pretty funny. Um, oh, so you're, you're like full of yourself now? You think you're pretty funny? But I just want to let you know that uh, I'm not going to listen to your show anymore. Oh, man. Because you were talking about uh, big teeth on those caricatures. and Caricatures. Look at that. I said it. It was just, uh, you know, in the heat of the moment during that prank call, I just could not pronounce that word. It's not like a word I have to say that often in life. I've got big teeth. And I don't think that's very funny. So, you know, 
I'm sorry, but thanks again. Whatever. All right, bye. Thanks for being a listener, Dr. Astronaut. Well, sorry to see you go. I wasn't making fun of people with big teeth, though. I was just saying, you know, caricatures, I said it again, generally have big teeth and exaggerated features, including big teeth. So thanks a lot, Matt Hillock, for making me lose a listener. Hey, Brad, Roy, whatever you are nowadays. Uh, I just wanted to touch on something quickly. Uh, your December 26, 2014 show, you said something about how you know if there are operators anymore. But guess what I did today? I called my operator, picked up my landline, dialed zero, took a minute, and then I actually got an operator. But guess what? I asked her, uh, are you an operator for just like this specific phone company or are you like the general operator for this area and all that stuff? And she paused for about five seconds. It was really awkward, like, Oh, yeah. Thanks for making the awkward pause, you know, reenacting it for me. And then she was all like, I'm not going to answer that question. And so I was like, oh, okay. Uh, thank, thank you anyways. Goodbye. But, uh, yeah, I was just like kind of put off. I was really turned off, man, by the, by the fact that she she was so unwilling to answer my question. She didn't satisfy my knowledge. But anyways, I'll wrap it up so I don't take too long. Anyways, cactus, cactus, penis, penis, penis. <laughs> That is kind of weird. See, the guy before said that we should be afraid of operators, but no, it's the other way around. Operators are afraid of us. They're afraid to tell us where they work. And I I know operators still exist. I'm just saying, for the most part, the whole mystery behind the operator on the telephone, it's just kind of gone now. It's just not how it used to be. Hey, Brad. It's Gloria's boyfriend. I just wanted to say that that definitely was not uh, Gloria's father. That was her neighbor, you know, the one who she always borrows shirt from, you know, like when we make cupcakes. Cake, thanks, bye. I knew it. Glory is so full of shit. Hey, Brad, Roy, whatever the fuck you want me to call you. <laughs> Everyone's saying that now. I don't know why. I'm a new listener. I wanted to know what you did. Call me Dave, please. To set up your production down there. Like, what do you use to record incoming calls and your voice and those funny sound effects? I'm only in October, goddammit, and I don't know what to do. So I can do it myself and steal your ideas because you gave me permission. I've gotten that far, at least. Okay, have a good day. Goodbye. Okay, I'm looking up the video on YouTube right now for you. And here's what you do. You go to youtube.com slash phone losers of America. You click on the search, uh, you know, the search magnifying glass thing. And you search on my channel for a video. And it is called Broadcaster and Skype Setup. Just type in Broadcaster Skype. That'll that'll bring it up. And that will show you exactly how my setup is or how it was, uh, you know, not quite a year ago. But it's basically the same today. And it shows you how I have two computers connected to each other through a mixer And blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares about this. But I'm going to put a link in the show notes to this video. And you can watch this video and you can see how I have things set up. And on the new PLA Media Pack Torrent, uh, all of the sound effects and the background music and everything else from the show is on that disc now. So you can just pretend to do your own snowplow show. You can steal everything from me. You can steal my prank ideas while you play my background music and my wacky sound effects. Basically, I'm going to franchise out my show now. (laughs) I'm going to charge franchise fees. Everyone can do their own snowplow shows. It's a brilliant idea. I haven't had an idea this brilliant since my whole broadcasting prank calls on Twitch idea. Hey, RBI. Um, it's Rumble. I, I left my yoga pants at some freaking restaurant. I'm trying to find them. You can give me some help. I was, you know, I did my yoga class in the parking lot. And now I can't find them. That sucks. In the bathroom or something. But I mean, you can help me if I ever find anybody who finds them. You know, I need mean, to ship. Okay, that's enough of that one. Yoga pants, something, something. I don't know. Let's listen to like two more. Hey, Brad. I've got a few questions. The first question is, um, if I keep calling, will I get like a cool moniker, like Ohio guy? Um, I could be. I'm gonna call you guy with horrible audio quality. That's really hard to hear. New Zealand guy. Funny, right? Um, but, um, now, psh. more seriously, there was a series of prank calls done two years ago to this kid who called himself The Bomb, and in one, they talk about a golden calculator, 
and change, uh, exchanging it for drugs. And in another, Stacy makes a date with him uh, and asks for a cat. And I, I, I don't, I don't understand it. I want to know who is this kid? Does he have a website? Um, why did he just accept that Stacy was one of his fans? <laughs> he said he said that he would tell his mother that um, he met Stacy at a concert. Does he have concerts? Why does he live with his parents? These are all questions that that the videos don't answer, and and I don't know if I can go on without the answers. So p- please, please tell me. So New Zealand horrible audio quality guy is asking about the bomb which is uh, Rappy McRapperson's uh, old rapping partner, sort of. I mean, they collaborated on some things, but he's actually dead now. Uh, I announced this um, a year or two ago when it happened, but uh, he was a kind of a drug user, as you may have gathered from the Golden Calculator call and the date with Stacy call. And I don't know exactly how he died, but I assume that drugs were involved because he wasn't that old. He's He was, you know, in his 30s, I think. And I think he had autism and stuff. He still lived with his parents, but he was in some sort of heavy metal band of some sort. I don't know. I really don't know a whole lot about the guy, but he was really amusing. I really enjoyed him in Rappy McRapperson's music. You should find Rappy McRapperson's uh, channel on YouTube and search for The Bomb on there and listen to some of the music between Rappy and The Bomb. But you just gave me a great idea. Instead of trying to come up with new content for this episode, you know, maybe doing a few requests... I'm just going to play that prank call between Stacy and the bomb where Stacy gets a date with the bomb because I think that call is hilarious. So that's what I'm going to do right after I play this really short last voicemail. Hey Brad, it's Ben Kilburn or Per. Ben Kilburn, the guy that has a show right before uh, Donald Sykes that plays stupid jazz music the whole three hours of the show. Wish you a Merry New Year and thanks for all the stuff you've done this year. You're uh, welcome. Continue the good work. See you later. Thanks, Ben slash Perth. I hope you're having a good holiday, too. I don't know if you celebrate holidays over there in Australia. I don't think you have them there in your igloos or whatever. But before I end today's show, let's play this amazing prank call between Stacy and the bomb. Rest in peace, the bomb. Hello? Hey, is this Steve? Yeah, who's this? Oh, man, I'm a major fan of yours. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, my God. Are you the bomb, Father? Are you the bomb? Yeah, I am the bomb in many ways. Oh, yay. Yeah? I'm just so happy I got a hold of you. Wow. What's hey. your name? My name's Stacy. Hi, Stacy. What are you doing? Well, I I didn't restart my computer. Why? Uh, well, the the monitor sometimes it just powers down and won't come on. But but that's boring. We should talk about something else. No no no! I can provide you tech support. Uh, have, have you tried that's pushing okay. the spacebar? I, I fixed it. I fixed it. I, I'm an expert. Yay! Computers. That's so hot. Yeah. That is so hot. Nice. Oh my god. So, um, I, I have something for you. Um, I'm in your area yeah. right now, actually. You, you are? Yeah. And, uh, I have some drugs. And I, I would really want to, I really want to do some drugs with you. Like, I think it would be uh, a really cool bonding experience. I think so too, Stacy, but... I live with my parents, and I can't just drop everything at a moment's notice and have you over at this instant. Well, I'm not talking about right now. Oh. Can you, can you come over tomorrow? You can come to my place. Oh, uh, I can meet yeah. you at the Walmart. I'll ask my parents. Here, hold on. Let me get, let me get a pen, okay? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, you live in Washington? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Yeah! Where are you serious? Yeah! Hey, um, do you know where the Walmart is? Um, yeah, that's by Office Depot. Yeah! By the Christian Exactly. Yeah. It's exactly. Can you meet me there tomorrow? 
Alright, I think so. I'm I'm pretty much free. You're you're pretty much free, like you don't have a job or Right, I don't have a job. I, I oh. have to somehow explain this to my mom that I, I met you somewhere, you know, and that's just over the phone for her to okay it. Oh no um, no no. I, I got it. Just say you want to go to Walmart to buy some huh? condoms. Oh, no. No, no okay, no, okay, no. wait, 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 wait. I got a better idea. Say yeah. you want to go to Walmart to buy a, a frozen pizza. No, it's okay if I say I'm meeting somebody. Uh, Stacy, uh, well, I'll just tell her I, I, met, I met you at one of my concerts, okay? Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So back to business. Um, can we do drugs together or what? Uh, they'll depend on what kind. Anything. I have like a whole fucking medicine cabinet of drugs. I'm like a pharmacy. Nice. Yeah. Like painkillers. Uh. Yeah. 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 Hang okay. on. Let me see. Let me see. Wow. This is great. Oh, yeah. Right here. This is Vicodin. Okay. Yeah. I got it. What about, what about um, some snow? Mm, no, I don't have any of that. But I'll bring the Vicodin. I'll bring the heroin. Uh -huh. And I'll bring... Whoa. I'll bring the marijuana. That sounds good. Okay. So... I don't here. know if I want to do heroin. Oh, it's so easy, dude. It's easy. But what if I get hooked and wind up like so vicious? Oh, well, then you just go into rehab. Like, all the celebrities go into rehab. It'll make you much more popular. Like, people will feel sorry for you. They'll be like... Uh, no. Yeah. I'd rather just do Demerol or something. <sighs> okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's cool. What? Do you have that? Yeah. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. Uh, do you, what do you do? Do you swallow? Do you inject? What do you... Oh, I swallow. Yeah. I, I always swallow. All uh, I do okay. is swallow. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm definitely a swallower. Okay, then. I swallow everything. But, um... <sighs> What time do you want to meet me at Walmart tomorrow? I don't know. I'm going to have to call you tomorrow on this number, which okay. I have I have stored in my phone now since you called. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. But can, I, can you I bring me a cat? Estimate. Wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Listen. I would give an estimate around 3, three o'clock or so. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's cool. I'll but be done with school I'll, by then. I'll confirm it. I'll confirm it tomorrow, though. Yeah, I'll be done with school, so that's cool. School. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, can you bring me a cat? Uh, no, 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 no. I don't have any animals. Yeah, but can you get one? No, I can't. But I really want a kitty. Well, I'm sorry. I, I can give you some cash to buy one, but that's the best I can do, really. Oh, uh, you maybe, can't go buy a cat a, for me? No, maybe I'd give you, like, ten bucks for cats or something. No, I want you a know? cat. Well, you can use the money to buy a cat when you save up. Fine. You're you losing upset? points with me. God. I can't. I don't know anybody who sells cats. I'm just being honest. Just being honest. You don't know a cat dealer? No. I'm giving you no. drugs. The least you can do is give me a cat. Well, I can do other things for you. I'm sure. Okay, whatever. Um, just yeah. call me. Call me tomorrow with a time. I'll meet you at the Walmart. But um. Oh, okay. Call me tomorrow and verify the time. But for now, we'll say 3 p.m. Okay, thanks, Stacey. I'll call you tomorrow. Okay, talk to you later. Tell all your friends. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Also, rest in peace, Stacy. That is the end of today's show. And speaking of the bomb, 
which relates to Rappy McRapperson. His album fundraiser thing is still happening. Everyone needs to go support that right now. It's on Indiegogo. Search for Rappy McRapperson. I'll have a link in the show notes. Last I checked, he was up to maybe $400, and I think he still has a few weeks left. So if you like Rappy's music, then that might be a thing that you're interested in supporting. Follow us on Facebook.com slash Phone Losers, Twitter.com slash Phone Losers, and all the other wacky accounts associated with Phone Losers. And when you're done following all of those things, then you should go to PrankCallNation.com and follow the social networks listed on that page. So you can find out when live shows are happening, because there's always fun stuff happening over there. There's going to be one more show this year, and it's going to happen on the 31st. Actually, it's something I'm putting together, and it's just going to be a clip show. It's kind of inspired by Gad's clip show that happened last week. And I'm just going to play the best of 2014 that happened on the Snowplow Show this year. So we'll be looking forward to that. Everyone loves clip shows, I'm sure. So I've got to finish that up and this by tomorrow, I guess. Here's a rap tune about the podcast called Serial, because I'm sure 100% of all of the listeners listening right now know what Serial is, of course. Who wouldn't know what that is? I've been listening to Serial. Millions have been listening with me. They know when I say I've been listening to Serial. I don't mean Rice Krispie. 